Hi girls, welcome to day three of our virtual spring day camp. Today is women in history. So each one of us is gonna talk about a little bit about women in history for our areas. We're gonna start off with the promise and the law, and then we'll go ahead and jump into it. So Miss Candace is gonna scroll down and we're gonna see the promise and the law. That takes a little bit of time. So on the count of three, one, two, three. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. Now the law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. So today we're gonna to talk about women in history in STEM, life skills, the outdoors, and entrepreneurship. So first off, we're gonna start off with Miss Candace, and she's gonna talk about her women, her woman in history. <laughs> Thanks, Natasha. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about my computer keeps talking to me. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about women in flight and space. So it was only 50 years ago that women, a little over 50 years ago that women were actually able to go into space. And when I say able, I mean that people valued their abilities to contribute to the space program um, in not just a behind the scenes kind of way. But let's talk about where flight and space really began. So this is Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart is somebody that we know well. Um, I think most people learn about her um, in your elementary schools, but you don't necessarily think about what she had to overcome in order to be able to take her, uh, her solo transatlantic flight. Now, when Amelia Earhart was flying, she was one, obviously she was a woman, and two, she was flying in a time when we didn't have things like navigation. You know who her navigation was? It was her. So yesterday when we learned, or sorry, Monday when we learned from Miss Mary about how to be able to tell where we are based on the stars and based on being able to read maps and tell um, the direction that we're going, those were skills that Amelia Earhart and other people that were flying at the time absolutely needed to be able to master. But she didn't have instrument panels like we do now in, in planes. She had to actually know the math and be able to measure things, not just by the distance guessed, but by the actual distance. Why? Because she needed to know how much fuel she needed, how long it would take, and there were a lot of different math equations that she had to be able to use just to figure out the weight and the length of time that she would need to be able to sustain her, her journeys. Ooh. My computer's crazy. Um, so our next group of women we're gonna talk about are the women from Hidden Figures. So many of you have probably seen the movie Hidden Figures, but those are real women. And these three women, oops, oy, oy, oy. <laughs> um, were highlighted in the movie Hidden Figures. But what you may not know is that Mary Jackson was in love, in love. This is Mary Jackson. Um, she was in love with something that we do every day, counting. In fact, one of her favorite things was when she was walking home from school to count everything. How many steps it would take her to get from her classroom to her house? How many steps it would take for her to, for her to get to her mailbox from her house? How many steps she could take around her house? How many steps it took from her bedroom to her kitchen? If there was something that she could have counted, she was counting it. And guess what? It led to great things. 
1935, NASA decided to hire a lot of women to actually start their start the back end part of their flight program. The reason? Because they didn't want uh, women in the role of actual engineering or in the role of being a person in space, but they knew that there were women out there that had value to add. And so for these three women to be able to join NASA and be able to make such a huge contribution to the space program is not just uh, monumental, but it makes a big difference when we think about how things are figured out now. When astronauts go into space, they not, they not only need to know how to calculate these things based on the instrument panels they have, but if they get into a pinch, they need to be able to do them by hand. Of course, if you were Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, or Dorothy Vaughn, you were already a human uh, calculator, right? All right, so the last woman that I'm going to highlight, if my computer doesn't go cuckoo crazy, is Sally Ride. So Sally Ride was an astronaut. She was considered the youngest astronaut to fly in space, male or female. She actually flew in space when she was 31, which I know for some of you probably feels like very old, but <laughs> for the, those of us on the call, it's not that old, I promise. Um, but Sally Ride had two loves. She loved science and she loved tennis. She was actually a nationally ranked tennis player. So if she hadn't been a famous astronaut, she probably would have been a very successful uh, professional tennis player. And Sally Ride was something else. She was a Girl Scout. In fact, you may not know this, but nearly all uh, women that have flown in space were Girl Scouts. What does that tell you about Girl Scouts? Hmm, that's, that's something to have in common. So I'm gonna switch over to my phone so I can show you what we're going to do today. All right, ah, you can see me. Hi guys. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm dressed as, oh, I should stand up, as Sandra Day O'Connor, famous Supreme Court Justice, also former Girl Scout. So today we're going to make a rocket. So what will you need? You'll need some scratch paper. Now you probably have some stuff left over from homework packets that you're doing. That's perfect. You'll need a reusable straw. I prefer a reusable straw that has this little doodad at the end. You know that thing that makes sure you don't pull the straw out of the cup when you're using it. Scotch tape or any other kind of clear type tape. Scissors and two hands. <laughs> so I obviously don't have two hands because I'm holding my phone at the same time. So how this works is that you're gonna take your piece of paper and we're going to insert the straw on the end here and you're gonna use both hands and you're going to roll the paper around your straw, just like this. So you have a tube, right? Now, this is gonna be a straw rocket. We have a problem. We have a way to get the rocket out, but I have a feeling that all the air is gonna come out this way. So the first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna tape this edge, okay? So we're just gonna pretend like Miss Candace taped it. So I'll move over to my prepared piece. After you've taped your edge, just like that, this is the problem with clear tape, you can barely see it. You're going to crimp or twist the end. So all I did was take the end of this and I squished it into almost the shape of a pencil. So if you were to imagine, If you were to imagine writing with this, just like that, so you're gonna squish it down, just like that. And I used a single piece of tape to hold it right there. Now, another great thing you can use some scratch paper for is to make some decorative fins. Now, on a real rocket, fins matter. Fins are gonna tell the rocket how to go, uh, what direction to go, 
how fast, that sort of thing. But for this, this is just decorative. So now I have my finished bottle uh, straw rocket. I'm going to insert my straw into my paper, just like that. We're gonna see if this, this thing flies. All right, Ooh. are you ready? It worked. We have liftoff. Now, if you're interested in other women in history and space, don't be afraid to look these things up. Always ask a parent to help you, but be sure to explore those things that are interesting to you about space and science. It's a growing field and there are so many different companies and government entities that are looking for female engineers and female mathematicians. And I met somebody last year that I thought, this is a really cool field to get into. She studies heliophysics. It's the science of the sun. She, sp she studies the science of the sun. Who knew? All right, so that's all for me in my Sandra Day O'Connor outfit. I'm gonna pass it over to Miss Mary and she's gonna teach you some life skills that might help you along the way. Um, almost ready. Thank you, Miss Candace. So for your life skills today, I'm gonna to share a woman in history that I really like, and that is Betsy Ross. Betsy Ross is considered to be essential to our American Revolution as she is credited with sewing the first United States flag. Now, Betsy Ross was born almost 270 years ago in what is now New Jersey. She was a British citizen as the United States was not even around back then. She grew up in the Quaker religion with the belief that everyone was equal under God. Women were even allowed to speak in her church equal to men, which was a really big deal back then. So when she grew up, she and her husband had an upholstery business and one of their customers was George Washington. Her children testified that one day, George Washington came to their house and asked their mother to sew what became, came to be the first design of the American flag. George had asked for six pointed stars, but Betsy suggested a special five pointed star that she could make with only one snip that would look more attractive. And today I'm going to show you how to make exactly that star. So I didn't get dressed up like Miss Candace, but I do have my old timey hairdo and I've got my glasses down on my nose like the old timey ways. So, Miss Candace is going to share with us a video, and I'm going to talk you through it on how to take your five pointed star from a piece of paper. So, if you have your pieces of paper at home and your scissors, don't try to follow along. I'll break it down and make it slower for you. But this is what we're going to do we're going to take our piece of paper and fold it in half, then we're going to fold it in half again. So we have a long rectangle. It should not look like a square. It should look more like a long rectangle. You open that up, then you take your upper left-hand corner and you match it right there to the line in the middle of your right-hand side of the page. So hold that corner down with your finger. Then you're gonna take your other hand and you're going to find that point at the top, make sure it's nice and tight, and then fold down that opposite edge on the left-hand side. Now you're going to take that right corner, you're going to pick that up, and you're going to match it again to the left hand side, and you're going to make that point really nice and sharp and tight up at the top. And then you're going to fold that side down. Once you have that done, you go over here to your right hand side corner, you're going to fold that over the exact same line you did just previously. And you're gonna fold that nice and tight. Now you're gonna flip everything over and you're gonna take that tiny last little triangle here on the right 
and you're gonna flip that over right on top. So it looks like you're making a slice of pizza. So you've just got one nice triangle, not exactly a triangle, but if you just look at the top. So that's how you've got your piece. And here at the point, that is the longest point that you want your star to be at. So if you cut higher than that, you're not going to have a star. If you cut lower than that, you'll have a smaller star. So to get the biggest star possible, you start right at that point with your scissors and you cut down in one straight line to a shorter point on the other side. Now you pick up the piece that fell to the ground and you open it up and just like magic, voila, you have your five pointed star. Awesome. So, can you stop with the screen, Candice? Awesome. Okay, Candace, can you spotlight it back on me? One. Yeah. So, now that you know it's not a trick, it really does work. And the reason it works is something called trigonometry. So if you get more into STEM, you'll learn about trigonometry, which is a type of math. So I'm gonna break this down a little slower for you. So you take your piece of paper and right here in the middle, you're gonna fold it in half. So if you're out there with your one sheet of paper, go ahead and fold it in half. Now you don't have to have fancy computer paper like this. You could have ripped it out of the notebook if it has little fringes over here. Doesn't matter, you're gonna cut those off anyway. Now you're gonna take, and along that middle line, you're gonna fold it over again, okay? Now that you have that folded over, you're gonna open it back up. Once you have it open back up, right here at that spot, right in the middle, you're gonna take this opposite corner, and if it helps you to remember, you can put a little X right over here. And you take that opposite corner and you match those up right like this okay and what i find is easy instead of trying to find get your top tight first i just come right out to the side and i make sure this doesn't move and then i pinch it down and i pinch it up and if you pinch it up you're going to get it exactly right okay now that you have that side done you're gonna take this part that you brought down and you closed it up. Now you're gonna open it back up, but you're only gonna open it up halfway. And again, you're gonna match it up to those sides, okay? You don't want it to be overlapped because if you get it overlapped like this and you just squish it down anyway, your star's not gonna work. It has to be precise. Precision is something that is very important. Just like Miss uh, Candace was talking, can you imagine the ladies that did the math for the, for the scientists, if they were not precise, they never would have gotten to the moon. They had to be very precise with their numbers. So after you've got that folded back over, we're gonna take this corner above the first dot where you started, and then you're gonna fold that over top. I'm going to give it a good, nice hug right here so it's nice and tight, okay? And if you did that correctly and you have all your edges tight, when you fold this last corner over, it should fit right together with no spaces. If you have a big space like this, then you might want to try refolding it because you're not going to come out with an even star. So once you have it like this, again, if you look on the back side, there's not like a line to go by. There's just a sheet of paper all smooth like this. But if you go on this side, there's kind of a little slopey line. That's the line you're gonna cut on. Now, if I, I could really cut on that line if I wanted to. It's not exactly gonna look like the same star you saw in the video, because it's not gonna have a very sharp angle. That's kind of an open angle right there, right? It's like, oh, maybe 
not 45 degrees, 27 degrees, something like that. It's not a very sharp angle. So when you open this piece, it's really gonna look more like, it's actually an, a, a hexagon. Remember from Monday in the soccer balls? This is actually a hexagon. So hexagons are related to five-pointed stars because the only thing different is the angle at which you're gonna cut that spot. So if I'm gonna change my hexagon to a star, I'm gonna change that angle. I'm gonna cut it down a little bit more. And the same piece of paper has magically turned from a hexagon into a star. Now what happens if you keep changing those angles? You have a pretty shallow angle right here. Remember, this is the angle you cut. And then what if I cut it even further down this opposite line? You're gonna have an even skinnier star. And if you cut it even further down, you're gonna have an even skinnier star. So these are the stars that Betsy Ross convinced George Washington to put on our first American flag. So I hope you had fun doing that. If you would like to try that, you can just Google how to cut a five-pointed star with one snip and you'll see that same video. So I wanted to do this today because when I was your age, one of my favorite things to do was paper crafts. And one of the paper crafts that was out and available when my girls first started Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts joined up with another famous woman in history that you may know. Ta-da, it's Barbie. Barbie was 50 years old and she had had over 50 careers in her um, life as a doll out in the market. So Girl Scouts and Barbie paired up and they had a Girl Scout booklet that they passed out and my girls were able to cut out these Barbie dolls. They even had extra Barbie doll clothes that you could get that you could, let's see, where's it at? There they are. You could even print out extra Barbie doll clothes to color in yourself and you cut them out. So Barbie doll clothes are a really, really old form of paper art that even my mother and grandmother did. So they even put out, sorry, they even put out the Barbie paper dolls in Spanish. So you can go ahead and we will find the links so that you could print out your own Barbie paper dolls and print out your own paper Barbie doll clothes and have fun with that. So that's all for me today. I'm gonna turn it over to Natasha. Thanks for joining. Okay, thank you, Miss Mary. So today, girls, we're going to talk about a, a famous woman in history in the out. Her name is Jennifer Davis. Jennifer Davis is a long distance hiker. She hiked that Appalachian Trail, but she and she set the record for the fastest overall completion time on this trail, male or female. It took her 57 days and eight hours, and she was the first woman to set the mark. This is why I'm dressed as kind of like a hiker with my backpack and uh, I'm ready to roll. Jennifer has completed the Pacific Crest Trail, summited Kilimanjaro, and set a woman's Vermont's long trail record. Today, Jennifer is still hiking along with running her company, Blue Ridge Hiking. It's a company that she founded in 2008. She was still able to be, she's still able to be a mom and a wife. Jennifer's mission is to get people outdoors. So we have very, we have four very important pillars in Girl Scouts. Do you know what they are? We've been mentioning throughout the week that we have STEM, we have life skills, we have entrepreneurship, and we have outdoors. For over a hundred years, Girl Scouts has been building girls' confidence and skills in the outdoors. Of course, when we think about outdoor, we think of camping, which I love and I know Miss Mary loves too. But the outdoor pillar is so much more than just the camping part. 
We talk about outdoor skills when it comes to cooking, knife safety, first aid, knots, gear basics, and the list goes on. We also talk about in some of your badges that you complete at different levels by going on adventures, challenging their skills, and learning new things, and develop a love for the natural world. So we know that right now I can't actually send you on a real hike, but when we get back to our normal routine, I would love to see all of my Girl Scouts out there enjoying a hike with their family and our troop. Until then, we know that there are some ways you can actually take a virtual hike. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you a picture of Jennifer and her family at their company. So you'll see right there, there's Jennifer and her husband and her children. And then if you scroll over, you can see all the pictures of Jennifer as she's been hiking. You know, just because she's a mom, that doesn't mean that she's stopped doing this. This is something that she absolutely loves and wants everybody to enjoy as well. So for your guys' part at home, this is what you're going to do. You're going to take a virtual hike anywhere you want to go. It can be in, in your own backyard. Um, you can also have it in your own backyard, I meant like in your county that you live in. So I live in Kern County right now, and I have been hiking through Wind Wolves, and that was interesting, and that was fun. I also want to explore other places. I want to go to Yellowstone. I've never been, and that's something interesting to me and my family. Another place that I would love to go to would be the Redwood National Forest. So I actually found a video on YouTube where it is a virtual trail and it includes nature sounds. So it's going to be relaxing. And as much as I really, really, really want to be there, I know it's not safe right now, but I can still pretend and close my eyes and just listen to the sounds of the nature and relax and calm, and then just look at this beautiful scenery. So this is just an example of one of the virtual hikes that you can take. I know that there are other park rangers and parks that are actually doing virtual tours and giving out information. So these can be found on Facebook if you follow their pages. They've got different dates set up and it's actually geared towards different grade levels too. So I know, I believe oh, Wednesday, I think it was geared towards fifth and sixth grade. So depending on what grade your Girl Scout is in, they can go ahead and attend these um, virtual videos. I also want you guys, my Girl Scouts, to write a list of supplies that you would need or that you think you would need when going on a hike. Now, this is where you have to talk about it. What kind of hike are you going to do? Are you going to go for a couple hours or are you going to try to attempt something like what Jennifer does, which is the, she, took, she went hiking for 57 days. So what do you think you would need for that amount of time? what kind of supplies you would need. So you're gonna go ahead and write down your list with your parents of the things that you need to take during this hike. So for your, your hour hike or your two hour hike, and then I want you guys to write out another list for the longer days hike. And then talk about it with your parents and talk about it with your troop. And then when we go back to our normal routine, hopefully everybody can get outside and start enjoying the nature like Jennifer Davis intends us to do. Now I'm going to turn it over to Miss Karina and she's going to talk about entrepreneurship. Hey, so last day for this day camp for entrepreneurship slash leadership. I didn't dress up, but I did wear my favorite shirt, which says, when women inspire each other, great things happen. So I'm going to talk about one of the most important leaders that is actually for us. Can you take a guess? That's right, Juliet Gordon Lowe. 
So in 1912, Julia Gordon Lowe founded Girl Scouts, as we know, and it's an organization that today serves millions of girls, just like us. And um, she was a believer that there was potential in all girls and the she had an importance of fostering their individual growth, character, and self-sufficiency. Self Julia is credited with establishing and nurturing a global movement that has changed the world. And we're actually all a part of that. So she was born on October 31st, which we all celebrate. And she was a sensitive, curious, adventurous girl known for her sense of humor, compassion, and concern for others. She was interested in athletics, the arts, animals, and nature. Attributes that would one day become the central to the Girl Scout movement. So there's actually see here, a few timeline of the honors that she had. So in 1944, the United States the United States launched a Liberty ship named in her honor, the SS Juliet Lowe. And in 1948, the United States Post Office releases released a three cent stamp commemorating Juliet Gordon Lowe as the founder of Girl Scouts. In 1954, the city of Savannah named the Juliet Gordon Lowe Elementary School after her. In 1974, let me actually do this. In 1974, a bust of Julia Gordon Lowe is dedicated and deployed in Georgia State Capitol. In 1979, the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls, New York, inducts Julia Gordon Lowe along with Jaretha Dykes, Alice Paul, and Elizabeth Bailey. So, um, in 1983, President Ronald Reagan signs a bill into a law naming a new federal building complex in Savannah in her honor. And in 1992, Georgia Woman Achievement, a statewide organization dedicated to promoting the accomplishments of exceptional women in Georgia history, inducted Julia Gordon Lowe during its first ceremony. In 2005, Julia Gordon Lowe is memorial. Oh my goodness, I'm just getting tongue twistered. Memorialized in the Points of Light Movement in Washington, D.C. It was the only national mon monument paying tribute to individuals who selflessly champion causes to help others realize a better America. And in 2012, President Barack Obama um, awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States, to Julia Gordon Lowe in her remarkable vision and celebrated her dedication to empowering girls everywhere. So with that, I actually have a little craft, which is one of our favorite things to do, swaps. So we're actually gonna be making a Juliet Gordon Lowe swap. So for this swap, it's very minimal on the supplies we need. Um, you just need construction paper, scissors, ribbon or a gem if you have it, a safety pin and a swap tab. So what I did was draw my little hat shape and then my little ribbon shape because I didn't have ribbon. So then I actually cut it out of cardboard, I mean construction paper, and then I had a yellow piece and I actually put a little rhinestone I found, and then I made my little swap tag, which would go right here, and I misplaced my safety pin, actually. So it says my name, I don't have a troop number, <laughs> but it says Spring Day Camp 2020, and that's my little swap for Juliet Gordon Lowe. So I hope you had fun during this whole spring break day camp and can't wait to see you girls in person and get back to our normal routine. So have fun and a great Easter. Thank you and now we're going to end with the friendship circle. Candace, do I sing? <laughs> One moment, technical difficulties. Oh, I'll start singing if somebody joins with me. <laughs> so I forgot to share, Miss Candace, for your Take Action Project with those stars, you can hang them up in your front window for your local hometown heroes and just put messages to thank those heroes as they drive by. So you can take a Take Action Project with that. 
So for some reason, I'm not able to share my screen. So uh, Miss Karina and I will just have to sing the Make New Friends song. <laughs> All righty. I'll start when you start. All right. <laughs> Make new friends, but keep me old. One is friends, the other. A circle is round. round. It has to end. That's, That's how long I want to be your friend. I'm sorry for your ears in advance. <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right, girls. Have a great day, and we can't wait to see you soon.